house of the Lord. We welcome you to joint worship. Black to white, young and old. Let's clarify the new me. Uh, because we're not going to go down into these waters and come up and then everything is all well and good and everything is all uh, dandy and everything changes. You will still have challenges in life. That is the effect of life. But now I don't have to face those things alone. And so one of our very own uh, has spoken to me in some weeks. She's a faithful member of, of our church. She's a part of the, uh, the leadership makeup uh, of our church. And she said to me, she said, she said Pastor Weaver, I was baptized uh, as a little girl. And when I was baptized, I did not understand the meaning of baptism then. And I would like now that I've been walking with the Lord now and I have a better understanding of my walk and of, uh, of my Christianity, I would like to have my baptism done over again. Now let me clarify that again. There's no such thing as rebaptism. There's no such thing as rebaptism. But when you come to a better understanding of this relationship that we're supposed to have with the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, then baptism takes on a whole new meaning, just like church attendance takes on a whole new meaning, just like the Lord's Supper takes on a whole new meaning, just like fellowship among one another takes on a whole new meaning. And so as we come to the water of baptism, and as we baptize our very own Annette Hall, I hope that all of you will remember your time of baptism. Turn this way. Baptism is simply obedience. It's an inward expression of what the Lord will do without, with us outwardly. A lot of times we've heard that it's an, it's an outward expression of an inward change. The Lord is still changing you inwardly. But we are publicly, publicly following the Lord in obedience. And then after we go down and we come back up, everything is not going to change. You'll still have the same challenges. The same stuff will still frustrate you. The same people will still get on your nerves. Okay? Don't be so hard on yourself. All you did was go down into the waters of baptism and follow the Lord in obedience. But then when you come back up, the Lord gave us two kind of sort of unspoken commandments in the book of Matthew. He said that now you ought to become salt to the earth and light to the world. That as salt, you now flavor the earth in a different way. Things that used to bother you just don't tick you off that easily anymore. And every place you go, you light up for. You don't have to prove to people why you don't do what you don't want to do. 
You don't have to prove to people why you don't partake in what you don't want to partake in. You don't have to prove to people why you're choosing to go another way. And sometimes those people, you can work with them, you can live with them, they can live in your house, you can feed them. You don't have to prove to them. I've just decided this works for me. And that's what baptism is, that I make this decision for me. is still warm. Anybody else wants to take a dip? <laughs> Baptism in obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. And all God's people said amen. amen and amen. Oh, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord today, isn't it? Well, we welcome you and we are so glad that you are here today, a combined worship service of two separate congregations coming together as one to glorify the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory. Let it be known. Let it be known. Today is a different day. Today is a day that we will, we will pause to remember just how good God is. He's blessed us already this morning with a with a great breakfast, and I I am uh, I am full. I am full from breakfast, but I'm full from the fellowship that we had this morning. But uh, but you are here today, and I just want to thank you for making that effort to be here today. We had a we had a meeting last uh, Friday evening which was our kickoff for the Friday Night Life. And, uh, and it was a beginning of something great that we will be doing combined with all, with all of us uh, from both congregations on the Friday nights in July. And uh, we're calling it Friday, uh, Friday Night Life, uh, Family Life. It's a time where we're Parents can come and bring their children. Uh, grandparents can come and, and just get together with some uh, Bible study, with some time to be together while our children are going through and learning and Bible study during that time. God did not start this building on this particular property 45 years ago for it to just sit here and not do anything. He put us here for this purpose, and that is to be, as Pastor Weaver just said, the light into this darkness around us. There are 250 homes within a quarter mile of this church. And if statistics are correct, that means that there's probably 80% of those homes that are unchurched. The fields are ripe unto harvest, but the laborers are few. God has brought us together so that we can together be laborers in the field. But you are, you are, uh, you're here today and you will be blessed. Let's just invite the presence of Almighty God to come in and lead us today. 
Sister Ida, if you would come and, and do the announcements, I believe, for today. And I've got them right here for you. you we, we've got you covered, girl. We are so high tech today that we don't even have enough microphones to go around. I think they were on the bar. advanced it. Oh, okay. I can't see that small stuff back there. <laughs> okay. On, um, if you missed it Friday night, we had a great time of the VBS orientation. We had a great meal, and then we had a great time of fellowship and um, stating what we plan on doing for VBS. How many people we plan on serving? Um, Pastor Odom was talking about, uh, or Pastor Weaver, who talked about that they just, um, someone had asked about whether we were going to have VBS because they had over 300 children, and they were looking, the parents, was looking for someplace else they could go. So we're going to be doing uh, VBS every Friday night. Every Friday night. And we're asking that everybody would come out. We're going to have um, classes for children, for adults, for teenagers, for young teens. We're going to try to reach everybody. And so we're asking that if you um, don't want to teach, if you don't, it, it, but, but that you would come out and be supportive of what we're planning on doing. We plan on reaching out into the community to do things as a whole. So we're asking everybody during the month of July on a Friday night, we're even going to feed you every Friday night at 530. Amen. And then at 7 o'clock we'll have the VBS. All right. Um, let me see. Okay. Oh, and we're going to be handing out flyers, and we're going to say 1352. What church are you from? 1352. What church are we from? 1352. And that's what we're going to say. Instead of saying White Oak, instead of saying One Life, we're going to say, when they ask us, what church? We're 1352, Friday Night Life. Right. Amen. Um, all right, so invite someone on July 12th, 19th, and 26th. But we are going to do something on this coming Friday. I know it's a holiday, but we're going to reach out into the community. We're going to go out and hand out flyers. So if you're available, uh, there's no set time. We're going to have some flyers that you can take out and that you can just reach out in your community and ask people to come out and um, worship with us. And it's not going to be, you know, we're not going to come and we're, no, hallelujah and all that. We're going to have some fun. Amen. Amen. Um, Saturday, July 13th is our church um, picnic and fellowship outing at Fort Yargo State Park in Winder, Georgia. And it's fun for the entire family. And we're asking families to bring a side dish. But you know what? If you can't bring a side dish... We're asking that you would come out anyway, because it's about fellowship. And so we have directions in the back. We have a map in the back. We also have sign-up sheets in case you do want to. I did sign, send out an email with the sign-ups already of who we're get, uh, bringing what. So um, I hope you guys read your emails. Everybody. All right. On Sunday, July 28th at 3.30, we're going to have an evening of the arts, praise and worship, and you don't want to miss that. All right. We had breakfast today, and it was an introduction. We will begin serving breakfast in between services starting the third Sunday of July, and then the first and third Sunday thereafter. Um, because this weekend is a holiday, we're not going to do this first Sunday. There will be a charge per plate so that we can continue to do this. This was your introduction. Didn't cost you anything, but wasn't it a great meal? Amen. And we're going to continue to have those great meals, and we're going to small, uh, charge a, a small charge so that we can continue to do it. We're not paying anybody to do it. We just want to replenish the supplies Amen. so that we can continue. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Sister Ida. It, uh, it, the, the breakfast was, was great. It's a time for us to have fellowship with each other uh, before worship and in between our Sunday school, our impact classes, and our worship time. There's some other things that are going to be happening that uh, is going to excite all of us. 
and it's being that lighthouse into this community. Do you realize that we are sitting right in the middle of at least five schools? We have R.D. Head Elementary right down the road half a mile away. We have Five Forks Middle School about a half a mile this way. We have Glen Oaks Elementary School about a mile this way. We have a little school called Brookwood High School that's two miles this way. We have Knight Elementary School, which is two miles this way. What I'm saying to you is that we are centrally located to begin building relationships with the schools. And as we do that, we begin showing others what Jesus Christ can do for them without having to beat them over the head, but just build a relationship. There's some plans being put together for a back to school rally. And when you hear about these plans, you're going to say, well, that's something that we've never heard of before. You're right. We do not want to do what other people do. We want to be what God wants us to be in this community. We're going to have a rally before we go back to school. And, but, and we're not going to bring uh, back to school supplies and give them to children for them to take to the school or leave at home or whatever they're going to do. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to buy pallets of supplies and give them directly to the schools. So the schools will have the supplies that they need and the children will not have to be bringing something in. A lot of times that's just giving a handout. We want to give a helping hand. And we'll be doing this. We're going to have a rally right here on this property, on this campus, that's going to have people from the, uh, from the county uh, offices, the resources that's available to all of the, uh, the parents that have children in our schools. A lot of times our parents think that the only thing that's available is a school teacher and a principal and that's it. There are, there are resources that's available to every student, every parent, and it's there because their tax dollars pay for it, but they don't know that it's there. We're going to be able to bring those different agencies here on this campus to show other, show families what is available to them. No other church does that, and we're not trying to compete with anyone. We want to be the church that God wants us to be, and this endeavor will be jointly as we work side by side. There are a lot of different uh, questions that's going on in our in our separate congregations, and and you know that's to be expected because we are we're, we're, we're forging some ground that's never been covered before. And as we do that, we will do it with God leading the way and we being obedient. We're going we're gonna to worship again with our singers and our praise team, but I just want to pray as we begin our, 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 this time of our service. Praise team, come on, take your places. Lord Jesus, as I stand before you today, I just am welcoming you to come in and take your rightful place. Let us worship you today, Lord, in singing as we've already worshiped through baptism. We will worship through giving. We will worship through the spoken word. We'll worship through the Lord's Supper. All of this, Lord God, is for us to, to lavish our praise on you. You have been so good to us. Let us now just give back to you through our praise, our, our adoration. Lord, bless this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
to me You are my strength Strength like no
there's somebody under the sound of my voice that so much has been coming into you and so much has been thrown your way that you have simply just been trying to survive. You've just been trying to make it from day to day.
You can leave your titles and your positions. Who is looking at you and who's not looking at you? Folks are gonna criticize you anyway. You might as well give them something to criticize. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you are our strength. You are our strength. I thought I could do some things on my own until the strength of God showed up. It is giving time. It is giving time. Giving is a part of worship. It's part of worship. And I know you say, let me see how they're going to pull this off. How is this going to be done? It is giving time. They should be some animals on the view in front of them.
So I pray, Lord, that you will bless both congregations today and let this, bit, this gift be from the heart with gratitude, not out of obligation. Yes, God. Yes. Because we know that you will continue blessing those who give. You will continue blessing those who are faithful and obedient to you. And now take, take what we have given and do your best with yes, it, we God. pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Y'all figure it out. We'll get from the middle of heart attack in the back. Y'all figure it out about all that stuff. It's an offering, all of it. One life, I want you to bless God for our praise team and bless God for our musicians. It is the fifth Sunday of the month, and uh, we had this crazy uh, idea, because um, we don't know what the Lord is doing. Some of you are trying to figure it out and waiting for directions from us. We are waiting for directions also so we can figure it out. We don't know what it is that the Lord is doing. And so, uh, and so we decided uh, on the fifth Sunday, why not have a joint worship uh, service? Uh, the two churches blending together. I share with who were there um, about this new journey that we're on um, and, and how is it that we are blending uh, two congregation to share one campus and, and what is that going to look like and some other um, and some other churches who are going through similar challenges and those different things and they want to be able to know how to do it and, uh, and those different things and I thought it was ironic that you're asking two amateurs who've only been in it for about three weeks to come and to give, um, to give advice. And so we decided to do something different with, uh, with Fit Sunday. Um, and so this is our first one. Our, our second Fit Sunday will occur on uh, the last Sunday in September. The last Sunday in September will be our second Fit Sunday. Um, and if the Lord doesn't say or do something different between now and then, we are going to repeat this process. We are going to do this again um, in September. Uh, and we have extended an invitation and he has accepted um, to come on that Sunday and be our guest speaker, uh, Pastor Tony Loudon. Pastor Tony Loudon. Pastor Tony Loudon um, has recently been called as the first African American pastor of the Maranatha Baptist Church in White Plains, Georgia, where former President Jimmy Carter, that's his home church. And he is the first African American president, uh, pastor um, uh, of that church, period. And a church that is majority Caucasian and he has accepted that call and, and, and is excited about it. And so we have reached out to him um, and he is excited about what the Lord is doing here in Lilburn, Georgia. Um, and so he has accepted the challenge to come and to be with us and to minister to us uh, on that day. I think sometimes in our relationship with the Lord, <clears throat> in our relationship with church, I think sometimes we get the idea, we get the big head that we are supposed to be the gatekeepers for God. We get the big idea and we act as if uh, we are the guards 
So we are to tell people what is it that God wants. And we are to tell people what is it that God wants us to do and how it is that God wants us to do it. And I have no problem with that. My concern with it is, it's people who are trying to tell people who are going through a break-in process what to do, how to behave, and how to act when they themselves has never been broken. Let me say it another way. Sometimes in the church, we make rash movements and we try to say, well, if we're doing this for God, it needs to be done this way when we ourselves have never been through a process of doing it God's way for God. You're not getting me. Let me say it another way. I believe, I believe it's, in, it's in John chapter 6. It talks about uh, Jesus journeying with his disciples and a great multitude the great multitude were following, I think it, is, uh, it, it number uh, it, in uh, about 5,000 that were following Jesus because they saw the signs and the wonders that Jesus was performing. And they were following Jesus, not the disciples. I'll tell you in a minute why they weren't following the disciples. But they were following after Jesus. And Jesus looked back and he saw the great multitude and he said to his disciples, we've got to feed them. Is there a grocery store close by? Is there a Publix or a Kroger? Is there a, 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 a farmer's market or something close by? And the disciples, the one who were supposed to be the gatekeepers, who act like the gatekeepers, say number one, it will take a whole half a year wages to feed all these folks. We don't have what it, requires to feed them. But then one unschooled one, I always call Peter the unschooled disciple. Say, we ain't got it, but there's a little boy here that has two fishes and five loaves of bread. But it's not enough. Uh, we don't have what's required, but, but, but there's a little boy here, he has, he has two fish, five loaves of bread, but it's not enough. And Jesus said, tell the people to sit down. There was a lot of grassy area. And the 5,000 sat down. And it said that the text says, the text says, Jesus took what the little boy had, the two fishes, and the five loaves of bread, and he blessed it. God, you missed that, you missed that. Y'all are so churchy, this is not a sermon, I'm just, giving, I'm just giving some scattering remarks, we're gonna get to the sermon in a moment, I'm not preaching a sermon, it's coming in a minute, I'm just giving some scattering remarks, right? He took it, and he blessed it. Here is why that grabbed my attention. Jesus is blessing What's not enough? Didn't get that, didn't get that, didn't get that, didn't get that. They already told him, we have two fishes, five loaves of bread, it's not enough for 5,000 people. And Jesus took it, and he blessed what's not enough. Reverend Sean, that tells me that you and I cannot experience the more than enough of God until we get comfortable with the not enough that we don't have. We are always wishing that it should have went this way. It should have happened this way. I don't have enough. We're always wishing for what we don't have instead of being grateful for God for what we do have. I don't have, I don't have the best family, but it's who I have. I don't have the best husband, but it's who I have. I don't have the best wife, but it's who I have. I don't have the best job, but it's what I have. I don't have a whole lot of money, but I'm grateful to God for what <laughs> took it. And when he took it, we knew he took two fishes, five loaves of bread. We knew it. Bible said that he blessed it. And then Marie, 
Then he broke it. It's in the breaking that we lose count. It's in the breaking that what was not enough became more than enough. What are you trying to say, Weaver? Some of us want to act like we big ballers and shot callers, but nobody wants to be broken. But I'm here to tell you, the most successful people in life have been, been through some hellish breaking situation. Show me somebody who has been successful, who looked like they got it going on, and I'll show you somebody who's been through a brokenness by God that they had to get down to zero, negative zero, but God, I'm going to trust you. I don't know how you're going to do this, but I'm going to trust you. I don't know how you're going to fix this problem, but I'm going to trust you. And sometimes we've got to get out of our feelings and get into the brokenness of God. He said it's in the breaking, in the, in the breaking that you start to lose track of how much pain you're in. It's, it, it, it's in the breaking that you start to lose track of how much you don't have. It's in the breaking that you start to lose track of, of me, myself, and I. It's, it's in the breaking that we stop complaining about everybody else and say, God, I'm in your hands. I'm in your hands. I, you are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me, make me, shape me, break me, God. It's in the breaking. He broke, and then he gave it to them to eat. And then it said, everybody ate, all 5,000, and they still had enough left over to feed them the rest of the journey if they wanted to. How is that possible? It is possible because we are always depending on people who may not be in the boat with us instead of looking at who is in the boat. <sighs> I love this scripture and I'm done. I love this text. Psalms 27, I love it where it says, when my mother and my father forsake me, you missed that, you missed that when part again, right? Not if they will forsake me, because folks who say they love you, they are going to forsake you. Folks who say they love you, they are going to disappoint you. Folks who say they love you, you are going to be tore up from the floor up with something that they do, something that they say, something that, but it's, it's a when they forsake me, good God Almighty. He said, then the Lord, then the Lord. That means I can't experience God thenness unless I go through my whenness. When they walk away from me, when they leave me in my lonely state, God said, when you look around and you think everything else is gone, he said, I'm there with you. He said, I will take you up and then I'll do what the song said. I'll give you my strength. We want to do ser service a little different on today. We didn't want a prepared sermon. That was not a prepared sermon. And we didn't want licensed and ordained ministers to preach to you. If the truth be told, God is doing something on this campus between us, with us, and we don't understand it. But doesn't it feel so good? Doesn't it feel so good? And so, and so we virtually, this past week, ordained, licensed, and anoint some folks that's gonna help us preach today. And so we have, we have two folks from White Oak and a couple and a folk from uh, One Life that's going to come and share with us briefly what the Lord has been doing in this last month and what that has meant to them. And they're going to come and minister the word to us. And so uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to put you on the spot. Come on, come on, come on. She was like... Girl, it's not that bad. <laughs> and following her, uh, yes, we're gonna, I'm going to have you come after her. Is, is this microphone on up here? Take it away. Uh, oh, I was hoping not. <laughs> <laughs> Let me turn it here. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll pretend it's not there. <sighs> Dear Jesus, first of all, I want to give praises for this wonderful, wonderful day. Yeah. 
And since this is untraditional, we're going to make it untraditional by the only way I can do this is use it as a prayer. So I'm just going to lift it up as a prayer. <laughs> Dear Jesus, we pray. We give you this time. It's your time, not our time. We pray that everything said is your words, not our words, that you speak through us and let it be your words, dear Lord. We pray, dear Jesus, that you heal each and every one here and that you touch each and every heart here. Dear Jesus, with your healing hands of mercy and grace and how the songs today seem to tie in and everything tied in with what you'd have us do and say today. How you've given us courage to do this and strength to do this because I know it's not within me. If they were five years old, dear Lord, you know I could speak to them like a heartbeat from all those years of teaching, but not to adults. This is just impossible for me, but through Jesus Christ, we can do anything and everything. Dear Jesus, we pray that everyone here be able to see and feel your presence as you've allowed two churches to come together as one church. How you bless the needs of both churches and you guide and direct the preachers as they speak each and every week. How this is all in your hands, not anyone else's hands, only you, dear Lord, only you that you've taken a, a union of unlikely groups and brought us together as you bring a union of a husband and wife together, which is unlikely, like Troy and I, who he had lost his dear wife, dear Jesus, after 48 years of marriage. And I had been single 27 years and perfectly happy being by myself. But you brought us together, and only you, dear Lord, because I know we weren't looking to get married, and I never would have gotten married. But you took independent churches, independent people, and brought us together as one. Unlikely, but you do mysterious th ways, mysterious things. Not our planning, but your planning, dear Lord. I love this time together with both of these wonderful, wonderful churches. They're one, not two, but one, dear Lord. Each and every week, we get to hear the excitement and the enthusiasm from two wonderful preachers and from a wonderful praise team and from wonderful music, dear Lord. We praise you so much for the talents that you've given each and every person and how you've taken that to bring us together as one. Each week, dear Jesus, you honor us with fantastic, enthusiastic preaching, wonderful sermons, beautiful music, and we feel your presence, dear Jesus, each and every week. And we know that you're here with us. And we know that you answered those wonderful prayers, like giving us courage and strength to do this today. We praise you, dear Jesus, for all the blessings that you've given us. We pray for you to guide and direct every step of this way. Thank you so much, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, dear Jesus, and amen. Hi, I'm Karen. Um, I'll start off with my prayer that I pray every day, several times a day. Dear Heavenly Father, I can do nothing without you, but everything with you. You are my friend, my confidant, my provider, my protector, and I thank you for loving me and forgiving me each and every day. Thank you, Father. I have to start with growing up in a um, household of eight children, mother and father, there were two sets of twins. My parents always taught me to look at a person's 
inside, their heart, their spirit, not the color of anyone's skin. We are all supposed to serve God. It does not matter who you are, what you are, what you have been, but what you're going to be in God's name. I have enjoyed watching us all come together. This is the way it is supposed to be. And that is all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. I know y'all saying, well, why can't Pastor Reva preach like her? <laughs> I can feel you, I can feel Marie, I can feel you. Why can't he preach like her? <laughs> Listen, we, we want to be in, and this is good for, for us today, um, that, that sometimes we need to be ministered to. And so at this time, I'm going to invite my dear sister here to come. And um, uh, to co Debbie, I'm sorry, Debbie's going to come. Um, and then following, um, following Debbie, we're going to have the dynamic duo. Um, the Williams, Louise, and, um, and, and I'm going to, when they come, I'm going to have Miss Louise to use, I'm talking to the sound booth, I'm going to have Miss Louise to use this microphone, and I'm going to have her husband to use this microphone. <laughs> and I need you to pay attention to me sitting over here, because when I give you the signal, I just need you to cut the power on this microphone, okay? All right. Come on, Miss Debbie. <laughs> Well, I have to remember not to lock my knees. <laughs> As he said, my name is Debbie Ellis, and I've been a member here for about 13 years, I believe. Um, I'm overjoyed today to have One Life join us. I'm per for me personally, uh, the coming together of White Oak Baptist Church and One Life has been a long time coming. You see, the Leap Dancers and I have been praying for a church to come and help us. Over three years now, we've been praying for this. I didn't know it was going to be you all. <laughs> Little did I know that God had a much bigger plan for White Oak than I could have ever dreamed. As people have left White Oak through moving away or through death, I began to question whether God still wanted the Leap Dancers here or if, he wanted, if I was supposed to move the Leap Dancers to some other church. Every time I looked at another church, God made it very clear that I was to stay at White Oak. I really didn't understand why, but God made it clear that I was supposed to wait on him. So I obeyed. I'm so glad that I did. I would have missed this miracle that I'm seeing here today. Two churches coming together to make one in the service of God's kingdom. So, with all my heart, I love each and every one of you, all my brothers and sisters in Christ. I welcome one life to our family. I want to leave you with a few um, Bible verses because, as I said, the Leap Dancers have been in prayer for this for three years. And prayer is such an important part of my life. And I can't tell you, if you don't pray, to God, the God that we serve, then you're missing out. In Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 16, 11, it says, look to the Lord, he is your strength. Seek his face always. In 1 John 5, 14, it says, this is my confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And then in 15, it says, Oh, and if you know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have what we ask of him. And then my favorite one is Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours.
don't turn this off on me. <laughs> it is a blessing to be here. God answer prayers. Yes. Yes. I'm Eugene, and this is my beautiful wife, Louise, and that's our kissy, kissy face back there, our daughter. <laughs> Can you stand up, honey? <laughs> God has been real good to us. So I like to start this off. I like to wake up in the morning thanking God for Jesus. And that's something that's good for us. Father, you gave us our greatest gift, Jesus. We, no one can ask for a greater gift than that, Father, Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We are here. We are on a mission, Father. We came here on a mission. And when we entered the door, back there, when I entered that door, it was, hello, how are you? Come on in. We're glad to see you. And through the history, we're not supposed to be like that. But God said, uh-uh, that's by man. But by me, I have the last say so. I am the beginning and the end. Oh Lord, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That's him. He said, move out the way he put Satan in behind us. He made him our footstool. Look at, look at who's next to you. We are a little bit different now and loving every minute of it. Yeah, come on, baby. <laughs> so we are grateful to be here. We are thankful to God for his many blessings. And as I look out and I see all of these wonderful faces, I'm reminded like Karen and all the ladies in, who were uh, before us and uh, that spoke that said, you know, a prayer that they pray that's on their hearts and a prayer that they pray every morning. And one of mine is, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the removing the despairs of heaviness and weakness from us. Give us your grace and your mercy that you will build us up each and every day where we will embrace this new season that you have for us every day. Yes. It's a new season every day. This is a new season that we're in right now. Um, as I was thinking about this, my thoughts ran back to the journey. The destination always has a journey. Um, Northeast One Life's journey for me, for Gino and I and our family, began about six or seven years ago. And about four years, five years ago almost, we embarked on another journey. My prayer then was, Lord, let this bank give us this loan so we could stay in this building and do what it is you wanted us to, you want us to do. So me, I'm a fixer by nature unfortunately. So I, I think I need to fix everything. And so when somebody tells me, even if it's not for me to fix, I think I'm supposed to fix it. And so I go about thinking of ways to fix it. I couldn't fix that. I did what I thought I could do. And I prayed and I said, Lord, let this bank give us this loan so we can stay here in this place and do what it is that you want us to do. So lo and behold, did I not know that God had answered my prayers? But as we walked in here, in, these, in this place, um, quite a few years later, I thought about that God answered our prayer, answered my prayer. He didn't give us the loan, but he put us where he wanted us to be. He took us to a place where he wanted us to be. He took us on a journey. And I had to be reminded of what happens in that journey. You meet beautiful new people like Ann. You meet beautiful new people that talk to you and that don't look at you, but they look to you. 
they see you. They yes. don't see past you. Thank you. And, and it's just that humanness in us all that we come together and just embrace each other. And when I think about it, was that us? Not a bit. It wasn't us at all. It was Thank nobody you, but sir. God. Because as Thank we were God. journeying toward um, White Oak, White Oak was here waiting for us. So we arrived, they embraced, we embraced, you, and God Jesus. is taking his plan thank forward. You, so I just say thank the Lord. God bless you. Thank you both. God bless you. Before we come to the, to the table, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to ask, and I, I may be doing this and get in trouble for doing it, but uh, uh, Ms. Weaver, Ms. Sung, would you, would you just come and, and just share, share your heart with us, please? This is Pastor Weaver's wife, and, uh, and I... <laughs> listen... For one time, he doesn't have a mic, and you do. Okay. My dear wife uh, is experiencing some dental problems, and she looks like a chipmunk today. And uh, and uh, she said that she thought it would be best that she not uh, uh, come because you may ask me to leave. And um, uh, but she would have been here. But this is Pastor Weaver's. Uh, wife, uh, and and I'm just going to ask her to to share some with us for a moment. Good morning. Some people are laughing because they know the microphone is not my friend. Um, I am an elementary school teacher, so being in front of kids is not a big deal. I can stay here all day and just talk all day, but when I see adults, it's, it's something different. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. Um, but I know this is God's doing because as everyone was speaking, I was sitting there and I was thinking, I want to go say something on behalf of Mrs. Odom and I, and we haven't talked. I haven't seen Pastor Odom in I don't know how long, um, because I've been running around fixing things, as somebody said earlier. Um, but I was sitting there and I was like, okay, I don't know how to go tell my husband move over there and like, honey, I want to say something. He would probably be like, what? Why? What happened? Just a little paranoid <laughs> because I don't like public speaking. It's just not me. I'm a, for, you know, one-to-one, -one, but not that. Um, but I was sitting there and I said I needed to represent the missus and myself and just to say thank you. That was the phrase that came to my mind was thank you. Um, the first time I met Pastor Odom, I loved him. I don't know. He has this smile. He kind of reminds me kind of like Santa Claus. You know, he's always... <laughs> he does. He reminds me of Santa Claus. Every time I see him, I look at him, I smile because he's so welcoming. And he gives you these tight hugs that no matter how you feel, it's just like it relaxes you. It's just, whew, okay, I'm okay now. You know? So... I fell in love with him the first time I met him. And my husband will tell you, I can be a little, just a little, little critical. I'm very protective. I'm extremely protective of my husband and my children, extremely protective. So when I met Pastor Odom, I was like, oh. My husband was like, oh? I said, oh, okay, I'm good, I'm good. And then we ran into Debbie and his son, and we had this, you would have thought Debbie and I have known each other for a while, we really just talked and talked. We left everybody else on the tour and we went on our own little personal <laughs> tour. <laughs> and we were talking, they were praying and we were still talking. Um, but it felt at home, this feels home. It feels at home. And I wanted to tell all of you, both One Life and White Oak, thank you. I know some of you are still a little bit skeptical. Let me say something about, that I, I know about my husband of almost 19 years, we've been together 21, almost 19 in August. And just a little that I know and I trust about Pastor Odom. They are men after God's own heart. I see it and I know it. My husband is a little crazy. He is, he is, they know, he is. But it's a good crazy. It is a good crazy. He, 
when it comes to doing God's work, it's like something takes over him. And the kids and I can't explain it, but we literally do take a couple of steps back and we just let him run. And for the last couple of weeks, I've been feeling a little neglected, a little, because he's, it's like, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And it has to do with the church, and it has to do with the church. And I have been feeling a little neglected, but I see God working. God working, and I'm just, I'm just like, okay, all right, Lord, you got this, you got this. So just for those of you who are already on board, supporting it, whether you understand it or not, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for believing the God in them, the God working through them to do whatever it is God is leading them to do. For those of you who are still skeptical, you're not really sure, pray for them. Amen. Pray for them. Whatever it is that's kind of stopping you or preventing you from seeing or supporting or just watching whatever God is doing right now, pray for them. Pray for direction. Pray for clarity. Pray for their eyes to be open their ears to be open. So they are definitely walking the path that God has laid in front of them. Amen. So on behalf of Mrs. Odom and myself, thank you for continuing to support and pray for our husbands. Amen. Praise God. And Pastor Weaver will get coal in his stocking at Christmas. <laughs> yeah. You know the one thing that was in each of these testimonies, and that's prayer. Because prayer is what will get us to the point that God wants us to be at. We're not sure where that point is. That's why we've got to trust his, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. Trust his heart. Today has been a day of coming together, of fellowship, of fun, and you see, you can have fun and laugh and clap in church. Amen. It's okay. It's okay. We started today with, with a beautiful ordinance of baptism, of seeing a life that is following all the way through the obedience that Jesus called us to do. We followed with praise and worship that was just dynamic, just dynamic. And I and I praise I, I, I praise God for our, our our singers and brother Daniel for your for your leadership. God bless you, brother. God bless you. It, it, the, the man has a talent that we we, we just every time we we see him we see more that God's doing in his life. We've heard the word given. Now, the passage from John of the loaves and the fishes, that was a sermonette, okay? If he, if he had more time, he would give you the whole, the whole thing. But, but it, it told us that God can take whatever we give him. He can bless it. He can break it, and he can make it new. When we think of what he does when he takes and bless and breaks, that's the perfect setting for us to come to the Lord's table. As we prepare now our hearts to receive the, uh, the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion, I'm going to ask that uh, the, the deacons from 
uh, from White Oak and the other deacons from One Life, if you will come and, uh, and, and take your place here at the front. And while they are coming, would every head be bowed, every eye closed? We come to the table, but we are reminded in God's word that we do not come to the table without first becoming clean. Letting us be clean in our spirit and in our heart. So as we are preparing now to receive this, the holy ordinance of the Lord's Supper, let us pray, Father, if there be anything between me and you right now, I confess it to you. I ask you, Lord God, to cleanse my heart, cleanse my mind, cleanse my being, that I would not have anything to stand between me and your perfect glory. Father, let this be the prayer of everyone that is here today, that we will receive what you have given us, and we'll do so knowing that it is you. It is you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor.
what symbolizes the bread, which is the body of Christ. That bread says that his body was broken for you. And because of his body being broken for you, he said each time that you come to the table, receive the bread in remembrance of him. Likewise, we hold the cup. The cup which is the symbolic of the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that without blood, there would be no remission of our sins. But thank you, Jesus, that you gave of your blood to wash our sins away. Take the, take the cup and as often as you take this, do it in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Michael Samuel, come here. On last week, I had the um, the pleasure of uh, of being Mr. Mom with the uh, with the kids at home. Uh, Mrs. Weaver was traveling and she was doing um, summer school. And uh, and Michael came into my room one day. And he said, Daddy, uh, what do I have to do to give my life to Jesus? And so we talked about the, the plan of salvation and how it works. We talked about um, what communion means, uh, because for the longest time, for the last year or so, he's been upset almost every first Sunday when everyone gets to take communion and it passes over him. Um, and I said, um, I hope that you're not doing this because you want to have bread and wine at church. And so we talked about it and we were able to administer uh, the plan of salvation. And so I said to him that when we get to church, we will have to come before the church and do this. Remember we talked about this? K kind of, yes or no, because we're doing this for real. Everybody can't hear you. Yes. <laughs> this what he sounds like in children's church. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to spend the next few weeks um, taking him through the complete plan of salvation um, on a level where he can understand it. Um, and then the next first Sunday, not in July, but in August, uh, we get to go back to the water of baptism. And not just for Michael, we, we want to offer, if you're in this place and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, Stay right here, Michael. Stay right here. You've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You've never asked him to come into your heart. If you've never been baptized, or if you've been baptized at a time, you, don't, you didn't understand what, was, what you were doing. You just did baptism because mom and dad said you had to go get do baptism. Um, and the preacher said a whole lot of stuff, and some of us probably were like the little boy in the video that says, I'll do it and just dunk yourself in the water. <laughs> And he said, but now that I have a better understanding, um, or if you're not a, uh, a member of a church and you're looking for a church home, um, we don't want you to consider this, uh, well, do I join White Oak or do I join One Life? Just say I go to 1352. Where do you go to church, 1352? Where is that, 1352? How do I get there? It's right at 1352. Uh, and we will direct you where you would like to go. So if, there, if there is one, we do not want to leave this place without a 
extending the relationship with the Lord uh, to you? Is there one? Is there one? If you're in this place and you need prayer, you said, hey, I, I appreciate today the messages on unity and the messages on prayer. I appreciate the reminder that in order for me to be blessed, I've got to be broken. I appreciate the reminder that God can take my little and make it into plenty. Uh, so I want you to pray with me because I don't know what I'll be facing on this week, but I know who I want to face it with me. You can just stand right where you are. You don't even have to come up here. You can just stand right where you are. And we will pray with you. We will pray for you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Anyone else? Anyone else? This is the most sacred part of service. Right? But this is also the part where the Bible said, and a child shall lead them. And so on, on Friday night, as we kicked off uh, 1352 Friday Night Life, living in faith every day, um, I had the pleasure of meeting a new friend. And so we played a little game on Friday night. Um, and the game was, um, she was supposed to pray. Uh, but then she also had the option of passing the prayer to somebody else. So she decided to pass the prayer to somebody else. Uh, little did she know that that prayer was going to cycle back around on Sunday morning. And so I want to introduce you to my new friend and ask her to come up here and help me pray. I'm not going to make you pray, but I want her to come up here um, and, and help me pray. Come, come on, Lily. Come on. Come on, Lily. <laughs> Lily is here. Is your mom here? I got a chance to meet Lily and, and, and her sister. Her sister's back there. Uh, she's not back there. Okay, Lily said, everybody home. I'm here. Um, but I got a chance to meet her mom on Friday night. And, um, and little did I know, we were, we were just talking, chatting it up. Um, and I believe she said that... Uh, Dad was from Trinidad. Her husband's from Trinidad, um, and I said, "Oh, I, I know where that is. I'm from um, I'm from Guyana, South America." And Mom said, "Really? I'm from Guyana, South America." And we just got an instant connection. So, so we are we are now an international church. International church. Amen. Are you gonna help me do this prayer this time? There's no passing today. <laughs> Me. Dear Heavenly and Merciful Father, we come to you today, dear Father God, to give praise and glory to your name. I ask over each and every person, not just in this church, but anybody that's future to come, anybody that used to come, I ask you that you watch over each of the children. I ask you that you forgive us for our past sins, our future sins, and you guide us through life and guide us to walk in your light, dear Father God. In your holy name I pray, amen. 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 Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you on today. You are dismissed. Hug somebody. Hug somebody. See you next Sunday at 8.30 and 11 o'clock. See you this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Wednesday at 7 o'clock we will be here. God bless you on today.